when you see a spurious uh, oscillation in your circuit, in your electronic circuit, then it means you have a problem. It's a problem because it is usually harder to detect and uh, to overcome this kind of oscillations uh, and that uh, is usually caused by self-oscillating uh, parts of the circuit in operation amplifiers uh, that is kind of tricky to troubleshoot and uh, find out where the problem is and how to resolve it. So I've discovered that uh, I have a problem in this circuit uh, there is a spurious oscillation uh, that should, shouldn't be there. Um, let's see that uh, at the oscilloscope. And as you can see here, we have a, um, a spike that is uh, synchronized to, with the trigger. Okay, moving the, the trigger level just uh, to touch the, the spikes, uh, allow us to synchronize the waveform. But you notice that uh, it is not well we have uh, some jittering because of course uh, this frequency is not in synchronous with the, the main frequency of the signal and uh, if we stop uh, we freeze the uh, the image in the, the screen and zoom it a little bit uh, you can see here we have a spike uh, and then another here and we see we have uh, um, frequency is 316 kilohertz uh, much higher frequency oh oops i've seen uh, i noticed now that uh, there is another spike here so let's uh, take again the, the, the measurement uh, and it is just uh, a multiple so is the 632 kilohertz mm. but this frequency seems to be similar to the one that comes from the channel 2 2 all right we see the frequency is 635 kilohertz so the two oscillators uh, are interfering interfering each other so there is a, a problem here, an interference between the two oscillators and uh, we have another frequency, let's remove the second trace and uh, we have another frequency here, it's very uh, small so we have to amplify the signal much more and uh, voila! This is uh, an oscillation that is uh, okay. Let's move the trace, uh, and uh, it is about um, 31 megahertz. If we divide on the frequency 31 and 500, about megahertz over uh, 630 kilohertz. And we see it is 50 times exactly 50 times larger so this is a, a far a harmonic uh, of the base frequency of, of 630 kilohertz and self oscillations uh, uh, typically requires a lot of energy therefore uh, the operation amplifiers get hot so a way to spot uh, if uh, there is uh, this kind of problem uh, is to check for the temperature to understand uh, what is going on down there at the chip level Oop. 41 degrees 41 degrees if we look at the, the other um, components we see 31 degrees this this is 41 because this is the amplifier that amplifies the same signal and by the way the temperature here uh, is uh, in the lab is 24 degrees the auto oscillation uh, makes the operation amplifier to waste a lot of energy but um, if we look at other uh, operation amplifiers here such as this one that uh, works uh, with another signal we see the temperature is pretty 
much the same, it's not much different. There are two degrees Celsius of difference. Uh, it, is, it is not much the, the difference. So uh, this is likely the temperature of, of this kind of uh, operation amplifier that is a high speed uh, amplifier. So the idea here is that uh, uh, there is um, an interference between the two signals and in this circuit we have two oscillators that works uh, uh, in at different frequencies, uncorrelated frequencies and, uh, and one interferes with the other, clearly and, um, and uh, the secondary uh, oscillation, the one that is at uh, 31 MHz it is likely uh, triggered by the primary interference so um, I think uh, there is something that uh, goes wrong with the power supply so let's check the supply rails first one 500 uh, millivolt per division so this is uh, about uh, 150 millivolt 150 millivolt so let's check another operation amplifier and whoa whoa we have here a lot of noise so because the noise comes from the power supply rails let's try to do a little experiment placing a capacitor this is risky <laughs> here and see what happens Oh, that's interesting. I move the frequency without, with, without, with, without. Yes, very good. Can be better. All right. Like a pendulum, if you keep pushing in phase a small initial instability, then you amplify that instability up to develop a full oscillation. So basically, uh, the phase in an amplifier is taken between the output and the input. Uh, so suppose we have uh, an operation amplifier that is an inverting operation amplifier like this. Uh, we measure the signal in output and uh, in input and we see that the phase, uh, the, the output is out of phase in respect to the input by negative 180 degrees. And uh, while with uh, uh, um, a, a non-inverting amplifier uh, we can see the output signal is in phase with the input phase signal and uh, so the, the phase in this case is zero, zero degrees. But we have to be careful here because actually the um, feedback uh, is fed into the negative input so we still have a negative uh, phase uh, and a negative 180 degrees phase uh, feedback. So in general uh, an operation amplifier is an input, an output and a negative feedback. So the phase lag is uh, when the output, uh, the phase in the output in respect to the input shifts uh, as a uh, function of the frequency. So we suppose at low frequencies we have a negative 180 degrees uh, with a medium frequency suppose we have a negative 270 degrees and at higher frequencies we have a negative 360 degrees that indeed in this case the uh, output signal is in phase with the input signal so if we look at this in fact we don't longer have a negative feedback but we have a positive feedback and, uh, and so the uh, output signal is uh, amplified more and more and the amplifier starts to oscillate at that frequency. So uh, we often see uh, diagrams uh, like this uh, where we have the gain here and here the phase uh, and here below the frequency and, uh, and uh, usually uh, we see the gain uh, decrease with the frequency uh, while the phase uh, changes and shifts uh, uh, along the frequency with an, another curve uh, and, uh, and for example in, in this example uh, here at negative 360 degrees uh, we have um, the uh, negative signal, the feedback signal would be 
in phase with the input signal and the um, amplifier would start to oscillate if the gain would were 0 dB uh, but because we have uh, a gain that is negative 40 dB here uh, we are sure this amplifier won't oscillate uh, even though the uh, phase shift uh, has uh, reached negative 360 degree and indeed uh, oscillations uh, uh, happens when the phase lag is 0 degrees 360 degrees or multiples or multiples and and the gain is uh, uh, equal or greater than one so this these are the two conditions because the oscillations uh, can take place and the phase margin is the difference between this point 360 degrees of phase leg and uh, uh, the point where the gain uh, and the phase at which the gain uh, is uh, uh, more or equal or more than one in this uh, example uh, we see that at 0 dB uh, or uh, the gain is 1, uh, this amplifier has a phase that uh, shifts uh, by about uh, 235, 240 degrees, negative 240 degrees and therefore we have uh, a wide uh, phase margin to reach 360 degrees which is given by the difference uh, and therefore we, we have here uh, a phase margin margin of uh, uh, 120 degrees and looking at the data sheet of this uh, um, operation amplifier the operation amplifier that uh, I've used in, the, in my circuit uh, here we have the gain uh, versus uh, gain phase versus frequency diagram uh, but honestly <laughs> I don't understand very well because I don't know how to distinguish which is the gain and which is the, the, the phase here so this is not that helpful <laughs> whether the um, uh, gain phase uh, diagram of a particular uh, operation amplifier says uh, the uh, amplifier is then connected to uh, an actual uh, circuit uh, uh, where the, the, the very same uh, PCB, the traces that carries for example the, 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 the power supply rails uh, and, uh, and the output uh, could behave as little inductors and uh, may have uh, and <laughs> surely have um, some uh, parasitic capacitance uh, connected somewhere maybe uh, even with the inputs uh, and sure enough the output uh, we have uh, uh, an inductor and uh, and the feedback uh, would be after that inductor so uh, if we have a capacitive load uh, this would cause um, a pole that may change the, the, the feedback and may change the the, the phase shift uh, that would cause a phase sh shift uh, at uh, an expected frequency uh, with a gain that is uh, equal or mm, larger than one uh, making uh, the operation amplifier to oscillate uh, causing the operation amplifier to oscillate and, um, and sometimes this happens in subtle, in subtle uh, ways because uh, the uh, the probe, uh, the oscilloscope probe uh, has a capacitance and uh, touching the output could change this capacitive load uh, maybe there is already is, um, um, is there um, some uh, parasitic capacitance and just adding a little bit of more capacitance uh, maybe uh, 12 or 20 picofarad is enough to start uh, an, oscillator, uh, an oscillation and sometimes it happens just the opposite uh, we mm, you put the um, the you put the probe of the oscilloscope at the output and you change uh, 
this pole making the uh, shifting the, the 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 phase and stopping the an oscillation that otherwise is present in the amplifier so how you can detect it uh, when it happens well in that case uh, you might deduct uh, you might um, infer that uh, there is an oscillation uh, because you notice uh, some suspicions suspicious oscillations uh, at the at the power supply rails uh, or maybe somewhere in the circuit uh, and um, and uh, of course and uh, uh, and uh, because the oscillation requires a lot of energy uh, you will see the operation amplifier hot or the current that supplies the circuit is larger than the uh, theori theoretical value, calculated value. When fast changing signals uh, uh, cause fast changing currents, uh, this will cause some voltage drop uh, at this uh, prosthetic inductors uh, and the traces uh, that, carries, that carries the power rails. And, uh, and this would cause a voltage, a voltage drop uh, that would inject uh, a signal into the operation amplifier, but more importantly, it would induce imbalances at the internal transistors that would start to oscillate. And this oscillation often is seen as a kind of ringing uh, in correlation with the uh, current variations, so maybe caused by uh, another part of, uh, of the circuit uh, or uh, maybe uh, to the other operation amplifier in the same package that is uh, powered by the very same pins and uh, and sometimes this develop into a full oscillation state that persists and can be seen all over the circuit so to solve this problem um, a couple of bypass capacitors from the positive uh, rail and the negative rail to ground uh, uh, could be used to provide a way to shorten the fast changing voltage variations and more importantly to provide the charges required by the amplifier when fast current changes uh, inside it in relation with the input uh, signal amplification and um, uh, it is important that these capacitors are connected uh, very close to the, uh, the, the package of the operation amplifier to the uh, rail pins uh, because even short uh, terminals may behave as an inductor and, uh, and uh, vanishing the, the, the function of this uh, capacitor and uh, as a, another important point uh, is that these capacitors must have a very low ESR uh, or equivalent series resistance uh, and um, often uh, are suggested to use ceramic capacitors and I found that uh, very good polyester, uh, good polyester uh, capacitors uh, do the trick uh, as well. So it was enough to connect this, uh, to attach these two capacitors uh, uh, really close to the uh, operation amplifier to, uh, to remove the oscillation and to solve the problem. And these capacitors have uh, been connected directly to the pins uh, of the operation amplifier. Still I have some um, more oscillations uh, in the circuit. I have seen there are 100 millivolt uh, of um, spikes. Uh, I have to investigate about that but I hope that the basic concept and the information, the useful information has been discussed and might provide some helpful information for you in the case you meet this kind of problems. I hope you find this interesting and as always if you have any question, uh, observation or correction please let me know in the comment section below. And um, uh, for now that's all folks, thanks for watching, see you next time, bye!